It's time to feel the rage. Welcome to Film Rage, where we talk movies in theater, streaming, and classic films as well. Directors and actors, beware as you cannot hide from the rage. My name is Bryson, a part of the Film Rage crew, which also includes Jim. Hey, Jim. Hey, hey, Bryce. And Murray. Who's done in his brand new Thor loving Thunder shirt? Thorgasm's afoot. You forget about my collectible cup. He <gasps> does have a. Wow, he's all Thor all the time. All Thor all the time. He's got his stoner on. I have now seen it four times. Holy <laughs> crap. So, with the introductions out of the way, let's spray John. Oh, thanks to all of you supporting us. If you love our independent podcast, please like, subscribe, share, and give us a five star rating on your listening platform. Or support us and join the Film Rage community by joining our membership at buymeacoffee.com forward slash Film Rage YYC. If you cannot commit to a membership, you can still buy a movie rental and dare us to see it. And we will do it. Do it. Do it. Now, Let's get to raging. But first, here's a word from our sponsor. Hey, Bryce, what are you doing tonight? I'm going to my favorite cinema, Canyon Meadows Cinema, to see the best second-run movies at the best price. What? How inexpensive are they? Regular price is five bucks, five bucks. Regular price is five bucks, five bucks. Makes me hope they also serve pizza. They do, plus a lot of other great food choices. Plus, I'm planning my office Christmas party there. They can host a plethora of options for any get-together. Gaming, movie, drag show? Drag show? Now I know where I'm planning my next party. Hey, maybe you think there's a, a Liam Neeson or a superhero movie planned? Ugh, I hope not. But uh, maybe there'll be a great independent documentary. Sure. Call CMC at 403-670-5444 to book a special event or go online at canyonmeadowscinemas.ca. And I just want to throw a quick plug in for our buddy Paul, who works at Canyon Meadows. Him and his... Uh, Skate Fest. His Skate Fest. They're showing Battlestar Galactica. Yes. If you're in the viewing area, I suggest you go. Yeah, check out... Uh, it's showing on the CMC's website. It's going to be playing this weekend, I believe. That is correct. Oops. Don't stream in. Uh, we don't stream. Why well, we do? No, we, we stream. We do. Sometimes we stream. It Sometimes. says so in the introduction. And it also says, directors and actors, beware. Yes. It does say that. It does say that. Because, you know, they because can't hide from the rage. You know, you yeah, especially your rage. Why is his rage any worse than yours? I've heard you rage. Yeah, you've been raging big you've time. You've been raging. as much rage as you do. It's true. Uh, that's probably that's true. true. I don't rage as often as you do. But you still, when your rage is there, it's pretty It's, there. it's pretty rage and hard. It's, it's intense. It's that's very rare. Intense. It's intensity. Yeah. So intense. And we got to see an intense movie this last weekend. We, did. we sure did. We saw Bullet Train. Pew! Or in Japanese, I believe it's Shinkansen. Nice. Say that five times fast. Shinkansen, 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 Shinkansen. Don't dare him to do stuff. That's pretty cool. Thank you. Bullet Train, directed by action specialist David Leach, is actually, I think it's Lech. I'm going to go with Lech. It's got, it's got a better name for like making action movies. Yeah, so Bullet Drain, directed by action specialist David Letch, is the story of a former hitman named Ladybug, played by Brad Pitt, who is hired for what seems to be a simple job. Get on a train, grab a briefcase, and get off of said train. Sounds easy. Simple. There's only one problem. Make that multiple problems as the train is full of assassins who seem to all have a backstory that ties them together in various ways, as well as there are many vendettas that need to be settled on this speeding locomotive. Isn't there always? Mm -hmm. Ladybug's simple mission becomes complicated quickly. Everyone seems to be saying that this film is kind of like a Quentin Tarantino or a Guy Ritchie imitation. Esque. <laughs> and yes, I would definitely agree with that. This has elements of both those filmmakers. However, they are saying that as if it's a bad thing. I say it's a good thing. It has the tra- Tarantino-esque flashbacks and the Guy Ritchie pace changing action sequences, as well as dialogue that would be at home in a film. 
by either of those directors. And that seems like a good thing to me. The acting, the acting is great, and at no point does this film stop and take a breath. This is not a movie that was made for me. At all. I know. And yet. Glad we didn't see it with you then. And yet. And yet, he says. I was royally entertained throughout. I loved Bullet Train. It was an action-packed, laugh-out-loud mondo. Oh. Consider me my. amazed. You know what? As I was watching it, I was thinking to myself, Bryce is not going to hate this. Even with all the action-packed action. Yeah. Thing? Even though Even it's there. totally the there, type of movie that Bryce would there hate. There weren't yes. any car chases. It was just so cleverly but, written. Okay, so this is just a really good example, and I don't know why I'm sucking Bryce's dick right now, but this is a really good example of when an action film is made good, it's worth seeing. Yes. Now, in my opinion, if Quentin Tarantino, Guy Ritchie, and Takashi Miike All right. made a movie, or should I say made a movie sex baby, right. it would be called Bullet Train, and the adopted father would be David Leach. Letch. Letch. We're going with Letch. Letch. I like Letch. I like him a lot. Brad Pitt has never been funnier and more entertaining. The entire cast was also amazing. The practical effects were gory and bloody and silly and fun for a movie with what has to be the most and best memory flashback montages ever. You Very know, good. and you know what? I loved every one, especially the Fujiwater memory flashback montage. The writing was funny and clever. The action was over the top and unique. Bullet Train was a ride that I wanted to be on all the way to the last station. I was so invested in Brad Pitt's zen that I didn't hate the terrible accent from Michael Shannon or the terrible Fast and the Furious type physics or the fact that although they wrapped up every character, they did not tell me what happened to my current biggest man crush happening today, which is Channing Tay-Tay, with his character always wanting to know who was the person on the train for the sex thing. The biggest thing that did not make me happy was the fact that although they tied up every loose end, we never know what happens to Tay-Tay. And more importantly, who was on the train for the sex thing? Although I'm guessing it was Brad Pitt. That's just my guess. It's a bad guess. Yeah, it's probably a bad guess. Because I think he ran into him a couple of times. He's like, who are you? What's the story? But then you never know. Ladybug could have, you know. I would have guessed Bad Bunny, but... Didn't yeah, really, maybe Bad Bunny. Didn't really, uh, anyway, but, but he kept asking the guys who so was on there for, uh, yeah, for bad, the guys. Bad Bunny was one of the guys. Yeah, true. Was this action film too long? Yes. Was there things that would not or could not have happened in real life? Well, hell yes. Was there things in this movie that annoyed me? Um, uh, yes. I believe I already said them, at least some of them. But this was so fun to watch, and the cleverness of a lot of the comedy and action way outdid any of the corny, silly comedy. This is a comic book brought to life based on Kotaro... Isaka's book by the same name, this bullet train took me on a ride to Osaka and made a giant stop at the town of Mondo along the way. I got some unpacking, but let's hear what Murray thought of bullet train. What the hell happened to Channing Tatum? That's I know. That's all I want to know. I know, right? That's all I got. <laughs> Everything no. else was, um, was delicious? This film was so much fun to watch. Like, so much fun. It's very seldom you get a movie where you actually don't know what's going to happen next. Yeah. Like, every new character is introduced. You think they're a certain person, but they're not. They're somebody else. Yeah. And you're still, towards the end, you're still waiting for that one certain person they keep talking about. And you don't know who it is. It's like, I was, I wasn't lost, but I... Me, uh, Jim and I were basically the whole movie. It's like, what's going to happen now? Like, who's that guy? It's like, and we were like near the front row. I'm sure we annoyed the hell out of people behind us, but we didn't care. We didn't care. We were having too much fun. Um, yeah. Well, you know, um, you have your Tony Tatum. I have my Brad Pitt. That's Gotta true. say, little man crush on him. Before there was Ryan Reynolds, there was Brad Pitt. It's true. That is true. Um, yeah. No, it was nonstop action and 
didn't know what was going to happen next. It was just a thrill ride the whole time. And yeah, I mean, when <laughs> one guy jumps onto a moving bullet train, yeah. I'm like, that was and hung on too. <laughs> I think when that happened in the movie, I actually said, you know, if this was a Tom Cruise movie, that would actually be really happening. Of course, right now. And it wouldn't be a stuntman. It would, it would be Tom, be Tom Cruise. Cruise. But Aaron Johnson is a worthy uh, adversary. Um, yeah, no, I loved everything about this movie. Uh, absolutely Mondo. So you know what that means, Murray? Yes. Are you ready for it? Uh, we're ready. This is hap- the, hasn't happened this, the, this the, year the, yet. The trifecta. I think. Mondo! 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 Nice. So apparently, this is a pretty fucking good movie. It is. I, uh, I really enjoyed it. I haven't seen a movie in a long time where... It doesn't lose momentum. Yeah, ever. at all. No. Yeah, from the start to yeah. the finish, there's no point that drags even for a second. No, and it's just and it's and that's why it's so shocking that I liked it as much as because yeah, there shocked. is a lot going on. I did it. mention a few it's, annoying it's, features for sure. And but the fact that there, there, I mean, there, there was a couple things, but who cares? It's just so yeah. much fun. Yeah. It, and uh, obviously, some of the things that I wanted to unpack was the children's anime cartoon that kept coming on. I was just like, it's just so Japanese bullet yeah. train. Like, you'd imagine this is going to happen so many times. And right? what's his name's obsession with Thomas the Tank? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's a fascination with. Um, the thing, same uh, thing, too, is that who's going to die? I like, it was everything like. Everything I know about uh, people by, by watching Thomas the Tank. You yeah. know what? But the analogies were so they true. They were so spot they on. They were so true. He nailed every single person, too, and in their the right character. were just... I was... Like, I didn't read who was in this beforehand. I was pleasantly surprised by some of the cameos. And, and you know, what was cool about... You know, there was a lot of good gore in this, too. Yeah. And and the the, create, the creative ways that they killed people. Like, a, it... It, it had some really cool ways that people died in this, which, yeah. you know, if they, if they kind of did the same thing all the time, it's kind of like, you know what? That, that was dumb. Both they to really, the head, both to the head, both yeah, to they, the head. they, they, they put in it all these different creative things with the comedy and the writing and yeah. the action. And like the whole th- thing with Brad Pitt's Zen, it was just like, he's just like, He's like, expect him to be like himself in California. He's yeah, like, yeah, no, he's totally chill. It's, <laughs> you stabbed me? Yeah. <laughs> he was totally surprised by that. Dude, or, I don't even know, know you. you. How would you stab me? Or, or the scene what they show in the commercial where he's like drinking the bottle of bottle uh, water. A Voss or whatever it is. Yeah. And he throws at the guy. Yeah, this is a good. This is a movie everybody uh, it's, it's should see. It's a fun see. movie, uh, definitely not for the kiddies though. But uh, I think they could have edited ten minutes yeah, out though. I don't know. I thought it was just long enough. Didn't need it. It was like two hours. But they could have. Why? I think it was Dude, under two hours. Everything. Mm-hmm. Everything just. It was over two. Went hours. around. Maybe just bare. Other clip. Then. Was it over two hours? Yeah. It did not seem like it that. It I, had, I have no idea how long yeah. it was. It was over two hours. I don't think. I, I thought it might have been like. I don't think I looked at my watch. Five minutes. Time. No, no. I thought it was like forty 90 minutes. Min- Ninety minute movie. I thought for sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm actually surprised that you just said it was over two hours. It was closer to two, but I don't think it was over by much. But anyway. Man, that just that thing. Didn't look at my on. watch because I didn't want to take my eyes off the screen. So what you're saying is Bullet Train felt super fast. It was super mm. fast. It was two hours and seven minutes. Really? Like, That's really, surprising. really, yeah, really. Minutes, but like five minutes of that was credits. So. Yeah, I love the credits. I know. The credits were also Actually, great. the credits were great with the like ladybugs two. crawling over the yeah. screen. Yeah. And I didn't get creeped out by the bugs. I like ladybugs. They're cute. All right. Well, we also got to see a movie called The Duke, which is a period piece biopic, which usually don't excite me, as you all know. But apparently, if it's a period piece biopic made in the UK, then there then there is an eighty four point five percent chance yes. that it will be great. British comedy. <laughs> well, at time. least based on the last year's numbers that I ran oh, to yeah. look up all the, <laughs> we saw quite a few and they're all did, pretty darn. They're good. all pretty damn good. So it's a, there's an eighty four point five percent chance yeah, no. if it's a period piece biopic made in the UK, it's going to be awesome. Yeah, the Brits don't let me down very often. How? 
Helen Mirren and John, John, Jim Broadbent, or as I like to say, British Richard Jenkins, are always brilliant, and this film is no exception. This is very, 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 very British, and very, 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 very period piece. You really feel like you are in 1960s Birmingham. The dialogue, atmosphere, and direction all feel like a 70s film all the way through this film. The writing felt real and the characters felt natural. It did not really drag at all until about the middle. But then you think to yourself, Jim Broadbent's in this and his portrayal of this wacky activist. How could you not be in love with this cute little guy? Through the draggy parts, I almost started to think the film was maybe a little too long but like a great dramatic family dynamic film, it hit me hard a few times at the end and had me in tears a couple of times. So you all know what that means. So because of the great characters and my emotional meter going to cry, baby, here's another British period piece biopic that gets a Mondo. Yeah. Mm. Well, you know what I loved about it? What? Yorkshire. The pudding or the, the town? The northern half of England. Oh, right. That's... Which I am quite familiar with, having been there several times to visit relatives. So nice. I love the countryside, and I love, you know, the, the northern... Because it, it, it's, it's definitely way different than, say, London. Like, Londoners are just rude. But, they're just Londoners. But Yorkshire's, they're, they're just so nice. Like, I never had a problem with anybody there. Um, but yeah, I loved that it. it was set there, and it was produced by Yorkshire movies or whatever their company is and yeah broadbent and mirren were amazing uh it was definitely a period piece and like and i had to look it up later it's like yeah uh british people still pay to own televisions like if you own a television you still have to buy a license to, to watch bbc that's crazy which is weird and it's it's well i did i see it was like 150 pounds yeah i think that's what you said yeah a year that's like, that's a lot of money that's like three times as much as a, as a subscription to any kind of streaming but, service okay here's the question did you look this up because no, that not. does that include because they have all those bbc one bbc yeah, two there's like five of bbc them, but, three but yeah, bbc gotta, four you gotta pay for all them bb3 seven bbc heaven uh itv and, and yorkshire television are free yeah so it makes you wonder do they all is that all they pay to get to get BBC television. But back then in the 60s when he was fighting all this, it was yeah. a couple of pounds a year. It wasn't, yeah, yeah. It wasn't a whole lot. But, but yeah, like his point, seniors can't afford it. So they can't afford to have a TV. Like, yep. that's stupid. So yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, yeah, you know what? I'm going to give it a Mondo too. Look at you. I was going to go mad. You little softy. I, I enjoyed it. I like my British comedy. Hmm. And who doesn't love Jim Broadbent in this? Like he's just too lovable. So that's a Mondo from Jim. Yes. And a Mondo from Murray. That is correct. All right. Interesting. Okay, I saw it like three years ago. Now, did you, what does he think? Yeah, what do you think? You've seen this like seven years ago. I, when it was for, before it was actually put out. Before into, it was even produced. No, no. I, it I saw it a while ago because I'd given up that it was ever going to come <laughs> in years. But then I rewatched it. Um, the Duke was another masterclass in acting from Dame Helen Mirren and Jim Broadbent. Simple true story that felt so familiar, yet I knew nothing about this tale going in. Yeah. It is an understated movie with clever writing. This is a story of Kempton Button, played by Broadbent, who steals a portrait of the Duke of Wellington and holds it ransom in hope, hopes of getting the government to invest more care for the elderly and for free television. Although, at its heart, this was more about the love story between Kempton and Lilia, played by Mirren. Mm. It was immensely enjoyable watching Mirren and Broadman do what they do. I could watch those two on screen in almost anything. I say almost, as remember, Mirren was in The Good Liar. Yeah, she's been in a few duds. She was also in both Reds. To uh, yes, that. she was. Oh, I loved her in that. <laughs> uh. She was great in that. But she was awesome in that. Yeah. This was another breezy true tale from England. It was a funny and well-acted meh. There you go. You know what? It... it um, if I hadn't cried twice, it probably would only got to man for me. But that, like, literally, that is my meter. 
if it's an if it wants if it can draw out of me the emotion that the film is intended to do then it hit its mark i can't i can't deny it my 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 senses are not going to lie to me and it's the reason why i didn't give with the one we talked about last week amando because i didn't get there there you go Ali and Ava. Oh yeah, yeah. Which no, I, didn't get, I didn't get there either. I thought, I thought it was great, no, I, but I, I didn't get there either. It was Mondo. It was meh. But that's not the movie we're talking and about. And the Duke was meh. Nah, no, it was too good. I, we we need to talk about Mirren later on. By the way, no, just we so don't. we know. Yeah, we do. Okay, well, well we know. will. But it's I there's know no why point she's not to it. On more lists, Is there? But. Yeah, there's no point to any of it, but we'll talk about that when we get to it. Yeah, we will. Yeah, oh, we will. We we're will. going to. Oh, oh I know oh, we're going it's to. It's coming up. Oh, it's on. It's almost. Ding, ding, It's ding. almost now, but not quite. Not quite. All righty. Well, to celebrate the Mondo that was bullet train, here are my favorite Brad. Oh, I thought you were going to say your favorite bullet train movies. Um, first off is the one everyone knows that he won his Oscar for, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. California? I think he absolutely stole that movie. I think he was way better than Leo was, and his character was awesome. It was just, it was just awesome. I will grant you, I loved him in that movie. Yeah, he beat the crap out of the Manson family. If so only the movie go. was good. And Bruce Lee. And Bruce Lee, And Bruce Lee. Oh, no, <laughs> that, that was a tie. <laughs> it was a tie. Uh, second was up, it? Yeah, it kind of was. All right. uh, second up is Moneyball. I don't even like baseball, and I love this movie. Mm. I also don't like Jonah Hill, but he was also good at it. He was fantastic. He was skinny Jonah Hill, Plus, too. No, he was still fat forget, Jonah Hill. It's <laughs> CLF daughter in this, who was, you know, freaking adorable. But what's her poppy peppermint patty hair? Yeah, I don't even I remember her. her. Patties. I love patties. She, she played music a lot. Mm. Next up, Fight Club. Fight Club. Fight Club. So Can't good. stand Ed Norton. What? Love Watching Norton. him getting punched in the face was awesome. I love Edward Norton. He's the then best. Then we got Second Glorious Bastard. That's true. Ben Affleck. Nazi better. skull cracking at its fine. Channing Tatum. Channing Tatum. There you go. And number five. Burn after reading. Also oh, amazing. So good. So good. So, so, so good. good. And that was a sorry, we just have to pause on that moment yeah. because that was a pinnacle moment in film rage history. We could not get a mesmerized off. Like five different There was like five movies. of them in that movie. Yeah. That's how because it was that good. Yeah. Uh next up, a little known one called the spy game. Redford versus Pitt. Dynamic yep. duo. Loved it. That's right. They were, they were a dynamic duo? Well, they, they kind of worked together. Did they wear tights in that movie? No. They, yeah, they did. They were spies. They had capes. Nice. One of the more amazing. Uh, and finally, number seven, because of seven, um, Interview with the Vampire. Cruise was better, but it's still my favorite vampire book slash movie of all time. Okay. Really? I hate so, yes, that movie. I love me. Some I like Brad it seven hundred times more than the movie Twilight. I as do I. Oh, <laughs> Twilight. The, the, the interview with a vampire pales in comparison to yeah. Twilight. I, I, okay, listeners who are listening right now, are please 14? tell us if you're not a thirteen-year-old girl, which movie is better: Interview with a Vampire or Twilight? Okay, we'll just wait by the end. That's right. I'm waiting. Wait, we're not re- recording this. Like, we're not broadcasting this live, are we? Okay, we got to wait to find out. Live. We need to find out the answer for that later. That's true. <laughs> Stay tuned for next week. I next hate week. interview with a vampire. <laughs> yeah, well, I know hate I Twilight. Hate. So do I. All right. Was that? Rising. Cut you right off. Vision blurring. Rage taking over. Not messing around tonight. <laughs> yeah. We've already, we can't tell our listeners why, but there is a secret that is brewing in this room and it pertains to Murray's bowels. <laughs> oh, gee, thanks for that. Oh, sorry, did I just spoil the secret? <laughs> don't think it's a secret any longer. <laughs> no, apparently not. <laughs> okay. The bigger thing is, some of us have to work in the morning. That's so. true. Not and me. it's like practically midnight here. Yes, it's like two o'clock in the morning. So my. My rage this week 
is really, 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 really simple. Yeah. Why don't we get enough period piece biopics from the UK? That's my rage. Okay. Like, they're, they're apparently on sale. they're pretty good. Apparently, they're made in other places, yeah. and I don't understand why anybody would make one because I, if I had to go on the other side of it to say of all the period piece biopics that I've seen. I would say it's reverse on that. Instead of it being 84.5% good, they're 84.5% terrible. Right. And so if, I mean, if you were going to go, if you lived in the U.S. or Canada or, um, I don't know, another English-speaking country, Australia or New Zealand or somewhere else that speaks English fluently, and you were going to make a period piece biopic, why would you even make the effort? Why would you just not call... The production houses in the UK and say, you know what? I hear you're eighty four point five percent gonna be a go that. But instead, people are still trying to make movies that are terrible. And it's like, just don't make the movie that's terrible. Just go to the people who make it best, and they will do it for you. That's my rage. Okay. Go to UK to make period piece biopics. Fair enough. So Elvis should have been a UK production. I don't even want to talk about Elvis. I'm just saying. Because that is, I have PTSD from that movie. I know. Can't wait to see it again. It's mm. coming on Crave soon. Ugh. I can't wait till I get earworms and earworms. All right, my rage this week is that it took almost a year for the Duke to come out as it was supposed to hit the theaters in September of 2021 in North America. And then it finally gets released in Canada and it is playing once a day on one screen with the hundreds of screens that are available in our fair city of Calgary. That's my rage. Yeah, you know, it's it's kind of like if we had to sum up all your rages into one rage, this is somewhat kind of your biggest rage is that we just don't get and it's not just Calgary. No, I know. It's actually it's, it's, it's actually everywhere. we are in the summer and we should be getting not just the terrible movies. Like I look I'm looking for next week and I'm thinking there isn't really one that I want to see. So I'm like summer's over. The su- it's like can we not put out more content and instead of just him having to go to streaming like it's like we now got to fight with streaming services to find our content but you know we want to see movies in cinema so you're right why was this brought not brought out and, and maybe it was when they looked at the month of release of last year maybe they looked across the world and they went uh there is only two cinemas open in the entire world so we'll just no no it's september 2021 things were toning down by then but well, they picked up again here. They're, 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 they're yeah, I don't think here. Toronto even had cinemas fact, open. The fact of the matter was, it was all of North America, and there was there was a lot of months between September and now. It's been a year. It's true. And there's no reason why this couldn't have been released early. There were so many weeks where we were desperate for movies to come out. Like and January, fit, February, and March of this year. And this would have fit the bill. <laughs> this would have been a perfect, perfect movie to, to release in, in so many weeks this year. And you and might it, have been... And it, and it gets buried at the end of the summer, and it gets released in Calgary on one stinking screen, yep. and they play it once a day. Yeah, so it was like 2 o'clock during the day when yeah, you were working. Yeah, and it's like it's at 2 o'clock the one day. It's at 9 o'clock the next day. It's at 7 o'clock. It's like... Just, it's got to be, like, this is the type of movie that deserves to be seen. It was a meh for me, but it was still a good movie. I bet so you, much better than 90% of the stuff that's playing right now. I bet you if it would have came out in February, this would have been a Mondo. Because you were so deprived from anything good in February that you would have saw this and went, this is the best thing I've seen in six months. It's not out of the realm of possibilities, <laughs> but I still think it would have been a meh. Who knows? That's my rage. Rage subsiding. Pulse slowing. Anger fading. Hey there, this is Frankie Sparks. And this is Scott Eisenberg. We're married. And we have a podcast called Shoot the Flick. 
Every week, Scott and I introduce each other to a new movie the other one has never seen. We talk about it, give our thoughts on it, and also share some behind-the-scenes fun facts. We want you guys to come along and enjoy the movies with us. Check us out on Instagram and Twitter at ShootTheFlick and check out our weekly episodes every single Wednesday on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and pretty much anywhere else you can find a podcast. Come and listen to us now as Frankie and I Shoot Shoot the the Flick! And you're going to get to hear in an upcoming episode of Shoot the Flick, Bryce and I talking about a movie that could possibly be the biggest rage that has ever happened. And it didn't even appear on film rage. That's seen a lot. (laughs) It is. But it's not because like when we talk about a movie, if we've talked 15 minutes about a movie, that's a lot of time. We talked for an hour and a half about one movie and that's almost as long as the movie was. Yeah. Oh. Get get if you want rage, people, make sure you're listening to Shoot the Flick when Film Rage appears. You will not be disappointed. All right. Well, the wait has been coming for I think an entire week, but we are talking about the lists. So for those of you who are not familiar with the list, and it's maybe your first time listening to our podcast. Go to our website at filmrageyyc.com and check out the lists tab. And on that, you will hear Bryce say something right now. What? What's Bryce going to say? I wasn't even listening. What are you talking about? (laughs) I wasn't listening. So you will see four different categories of actors, directors. We have the mesmerized. We have the doubted. The Undoubted and the Repulsive. Yeah, so go to the website. Check it out. Check it out. And read all the rules. Click on it read on the rules. There you go. See, you're already already up to speed, and you you just had to listen for a second. Yeah. So, uh... (laughs) We are talking about... (laughs) Murray had brought forward to us last week the movie Notes on a Scandal. Which I had never seen. I also had never seen. And, you know, if I had to say one thing about this movie... Yeah? Why have I not seen this movie? It was awesome. It was, it was okay. I love this movie. It had, a, I it had weird, it movie? had pacing problems. It, but me. I like the, you know what? It was so. The the content of this movie is so uncomfortable to watch. Uh, it's it's yeah. very rapid fire. Oh, yeah. The word I boom, use boom, is boom, boom, creepy. Boom. It's cringe this inducing. Was a creepy it was, film. So you got to see it then, Mur? Yeah, I rented it. Nice. Shop it. Very it's, but you know what? I didn't mind it because it was so cringe inducing to watch this movie that I'm just like, it was so well done because I was entirely creeped out by it, which made yeah. it, it couldn't have been anything but a Mondo for me. So you given, you're given notes on a scandal, Mondo. Yeah, absolutely. I absolutely huh. love this well, movie. I we were rating it. Yeah, we we're going to rate it. What, do you, what oh, would you give we it? We were just going to talk about um, No. I wouldn't say the whole movie was a Mondo. I wouldn't um, say any of it was a I Mondo. would say Judy Dench was absolutely Mondo. Okay. Yep. And I would say it was meh. So it was a meh for you then, Mer? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. I, um, I also agree with you about Judy Dench. So. I mean, it... If she was on our list, it wouldn't even been close. All right, so this poses, well, but but this that's actually the thing, this actually poses a question. She's in the movie, yes, uh, she, and we have two mesmerizing mesmerizing off, yeah. and I want to put this forward. We've talked about this in the past. Judy Dench out mesmerized the two of them. Doesn't matter. Yeah, but we also talked about the fact that if we have someone that's not. Not gonna say we're gonna no, put no, no. Judy Dench on. Okay, it. yeah, yeah, no, I'm I'm already I'm already on board that. I think. I think this conversation, you think Judy Dench was the most mesmerizing person in this Absolutely. film. Absolutely. Yes, as do I. As do you. As do I, which means they're all gone. Yes. Okay, Unless so we Nye, actually decide to put Judy Dench on the... No, we can't because she's off because she's oh, been out mesmerized already. Oh, there you go. So everybody's gone. Everybody's gone. 
Because she can't come back on. Yeah, that's Once true. you're off, you've already I forgot we took her off. Why do, we, do you remember what we took I her off? I can't remember who it was, but somebody Yes, else. I do remember. I th- yeah. You know what? I think it was actually Bill Nye. It <laughs> might have been Bill Nye. <laughs> but you know what? That's the rule. That's you the have rule. to always. Here's the thing, people, if you're listening to us. So just we get be, passionate just about this. Before we go any clearer, yes. any further, we never did say exactly. It was Bill Nye. Versus Kate Blanchett. Yes. To see who is the most mesmerized in this movie. Yeah. Yes. The unfortunate thing for both of them is that Dame Judy Dench was also yes. in this movie That's and right. blew them out of the water. Uh, it wasn't even a competition. Even and they are both now gone. Yes. The unfortunate thing is that Judy Dench was already on the mesmerized list and once was upon gone a time, before. And she was out mesmerized. Yes. Which means. She can't come back on. It's true. Which means this was a total slaughter. Everybody's and, gone. And, Everybody's you know, off mesmerized forever. But but here's the thing. We have to everybody has to realize yes. who are listening to us. Yes. To be mesmerizing. Yes. And you know what? We talk about some of our favorite actors uh, that that to us personally, they may be like our favorite actor and we want to go see that movie. Mm-hmm. In the mesmerize, you have to be mesmerizing in every single thing that you're in to be considered mesmerizing. And we have lost some heavy heavyweights on this. We've lost Christopher Walken. Yep. Just recently, we we now lost Bill Nye. We lost Dev Patel just the other week yep. because he was he was a dump fest in that film. Yep. Like you cannot you you know. The reason we put these people on to begin with is because we, in our minds, we're like, these people are mesmerizing. And and, and they are, but in certain, when, when, in when they some butt movies. heads, one's got to be more mesmerizing than the other. And I mean, there's times where we've both been, yeah, we've been it, torn, right? Yeah. But there was, there was, there was, this time there were three of us that saw this movie. And unfortunately, Bill Nye and Kate Blanchett, neither oh. of them made the cut. Just curious, Murr. Yeah. Who did you like better between Nye and Blanchett? Uh, Blanchett. Yeah. Nye wasn't in it long enough. There you go. He was in it for five minutes though, yeah, he so was more than he, five he qualified minutes, but, for five minutes. But yeah, he was in very. Few I would scenes, I would tend to mostly, agree with Murray on this. I would say now. Bill. Although you know what, they both had their their speech yep. where Nye lost his shit and yep. and she actually had a yep. scene. I thought yeah. I, so he, I th- I think both scenes were pretty equal. It was leaning a little bit towards. Well, Nye, and, but and, Blanchett yeah, had I mean, too many other Blanchett, good scenes. That would have gone Blanchett Nye. had to act uh, against Judy Dench. Bill Nye, for the most part, was just in yeah, family I mean, scenes. But he did. There wasn't a couple of emotional there, scenes. There was with a couple him. of scenes, but I mean, Blanchett had the bigger scenes. And eh, none of it mattered because like Judy her. Dench. Judy <laughs> Dench destroyed them. She took everybody oh, out, and she's not even on the list. Right. That is so. So, so, so true. Okay, so I said, let's talk about Helen Mirren. Has she, she's never been on our mesmerized list before. Well, Hasn't she? Since you guys hated the Red movies, I'm pretty sure she No, was. no, I didn't hate the Red Here, movies. Here's the thing he with Helen Mirren. I, as wonderful, as wonderful as she was in the Duke, I'm still leaning broadbent there. So if you want to have a conversation, okay. So should we talk? But broadband if, you're, too, if, you're, if you're saying Mirren was more mesmerizing then, than Broadbent, then, then it's all wash and nobody gets on. Well, well, or or what's the or? Or as we say, they're both on, and we now got to have them on both on the list. No, you can't have them both on because they were in the same movie. Okay, well, Murray, you saw. Do you think Broadbent out mesmerized Mirren, Mirren in that movie? Uh, I felt it was pretty equal, actually. It, yeah, it was a dead heat. Yeah, you know. Anyway, so really we got it. We got to split other, all the way down the middle, which means that apparently one of them wasn't superiorly mesmerizing. Yeah, sad because and because and because both now if they were both already on the list, they would still be on. They'd the still list. be on the list, but because yeah, but they weren't is, on the list. How is that not fair that we haven't brought uh, them up before? We, we didn't. We we didn't put them against Life's each other. Not they, fair. They on the mesmerizing. <laughs> Life's not fair. Well. We may see them in another movie and go, wow, they really are mesmerizing. At that point, it's just one of them. So then we can add them. And then we, can't, we can go back and say, well, this one actually tied. So, Oh, then I'll just go back and watch the, the good Red movie or whatever the heck it is. And I'm and sure, she's, yeah, I'm she sure was, there's some, yeah. some supporting actor in there that was better than her. And you, you know what? You don't even, you know what? You've literally just turned my stomach 
because that movie was so awful. Was so she awful doesn't deserve to be on no, the Mesmerized I'm sorry. List, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's uh, as it's, you call it, a a Kevin. Vic- she's, she's been a, Kevin Spacey done that. She's, she's a victim of her own choices. <laughs> that's, that's right. Did you get to see that movie, Murray? Which one? The Good Thief. The Good no. Thief. It's, it's, I think it was a streaming thing. If you can imagine Liam Neeson making a movie with Helen Mirren. Wasn't it, uh, what's his name? Old it was uh, Jonathan Price. No, no, no. The, no, the, it the was, old uh, dude. The old dude from the heck Gan- was it? Gandalf. Yeah, it was yeah, Ian McKellen. It was Gandalf. It was the Gandalf. It was, yeah. Yeah, it was the Gandalf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You're right. Well, That's who it was. It. And, and you was, know what? I love him. Yeah, I love him too, and he was terrible. He's now been destroyed by that movie. Yeah, that movie destroyed two oh, like, sure superior actors. Billions he made from the Lord of the Rings movies. He's just crying. It always comes down to money with you, Murr, and I never just, understand just that. Saying. Money doesn't mean... Like, d- money doesn't mean dick. Yeah, uh, but except, actors, for the most part, make money. Uh, they make movies to make money, and if they, they're rolling in bank, they don't give a crap what you think of their movies. I think they do. I think they do. Because Ryan Reynolds still is embarrassed by that movie he made, Green Snotball or whatever Green it was Lantern. called. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, he doesn't. He, he knows that that was a bad thing, and he made a shit ton of money. So he's embarrassed I that that's know, a mark. I don't know oh, no, one. he talks about it regularly. I off that one. That one yeah. didn't make a lot of money. Oh, yeah, it's... I'll, well, it may not have, but I'm sure he did. Yeah, he made a shit ton of money to do that movie. They all do things when they're younger. Okay, you can't have it both ways, man. <laughs> you gotta pay the bills, dude. <laughs> so all of a sudden, you're like making an opposite argument. I don't understand. No, it's like people just have to make money. That's, Let's move on. That's, that's the, the hard fact of the film. Industry. And you know what? We're going to judge them because they did. These pretzels are making me thirsty. And they're going to be judged because of it. Sure thing, Jerry. That's right. All right, I guess we have... Oh, do you have what we're seeing next week, Mark? Um, Yeah, I picked one it, out. It doesn't have Helen <laughs> Helen Mirren no, or not. Jim Broadbent or <laughs> or Kate Blanchett. Uh, as far as I know, there are no English people in this one. Okay. Uh, this is a Philip off. A what? Whoa, I like Philip Well, Philip-off. you said Philip Seymour Hoffman. Uh, yeah. So yeah. I went through his movies. Nice. And if you, I couldn't find one that he was with anybody else in the list on. Except... And I came up with one. Boogie Nights. Nice. Philip Seymour Hoffman and Philip Baker, Baker Hall. Hall. Oh, yes. They both had about the same amount of screen time, as far as I can tell. Yes. Right on. I'm digging it. Yeah, there this is going to be a, This is making me a happy. Philip, this is going to be a Philip. This is going to fill up my soul. I'm sorry, what was that movie? Just kidding. <laughs> Plus, it was a movie that Burt Reynolds should have won an Oscar for. And it's the one that we got to see Marky Mark's fake penis. Yes. More importantly, and I don't know that that's other, important at all. And, 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 and some female body parts. That's right. Huh. Same. I don't all right. Know. Well, and stay William tuned. William H Macy's in it too. Is he still on our list? No, Kevin Spacey oh, can never no. be. A, this no. is this is William H Macy. Oh, William, oh, H. William H Macy. H. Macy. Uh, uh, probably not. Yeah, I think he got knocked out. I can't remember. I'd have to look. If that he one is, up. we'll find out. Stay tuned next week, people. Stay tuned. It, it could be a Philip Hoff. With a Macy. With a, with a, Macy. With a, with a, a side Macy. of Macy. Chaser of Macy. Macy sandwich. That's right. <laughs> Ew. Delicious. Last week on Rage or Dare, both Bryce and Jim decided to rage from the merman's oh-so-tasty ice-creamy bucket of rage. Apparently, there really was a film from 2002 called Sorority Boys, even though none of the crew believed it actually existed. This week, yes, Bryce, it is you and you alone who gets to choose to rage or dare. And no, you can't have the week off. Yeesh, what a whiner. (laughs) And yes, I can see that pouty look on your face. For I am everywhere. (laughs) I am Casey, the great and powerful, and you cannot escape my sight. Now let's check in with the boys and see if a movie that sounds like white chicks, but with white dudes, but in college, which also seems to be Three's Company sketch, stretched into an hour and 33 minute movie, is as stupid as it sounds. Or is this a movie they are regretting they didn't see in cinemas in 2002? Something tells me it's stupid, but who am I? Oh, yes. The great and powerful Casey. <laughs> <laughs> He has way too much fun with that. 
<laughs> literally the best. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's not my it turn is, this week. <laughs> Why do you not sure get this? You get one week off yeah. every two weeks. Yeah. Do the math. And I never get a week off. Who did it last week? It we was me. It. No, I did it last week. This week, we're both doing it. So next week is you. I think you the do. math is the math. I think you get wrong. one week off every I'm three look weeks. Into this. I mean, I'll play along and choose a movie and everything, but I'm going to go look into this. You, I think you, you're you know how easy it is for me to look into okay, this? Okay, go ahead. Oh, look not, into it. Okay, well, while you're talking so about sorority boys, yes. I am yeah. literally going to bitch slap you with our website. <sighs> sorority boys. I'm not going to talk long about it. Because, you know, it was, soror- it was sorority boys. Because sorority boys was a waste of time. I enjoyed some of the Harland Williams bits. It does get a few points for the dildo catapult. That is something I'd not seen before. The rest of the movie, however, was utterly forgettable. It needed to lean all the way in on its attempts at crudeness. It seemed to stop a little short as to try not to offend, which... Made for a pretty lame movie. Still, it had Harlan Williams and a dildo catapult. So it was meh. Nah, it was still a rage. <laughs> of course it was. I know my stuff. Oh, yeah, baby. Well, fraternity suspense comedy films, do they still make these in 2002? Yep. Some movie genres don't hold up so well. But not these genre masterpiece. Misogyny laced frat films with TNA and hyper cornball comedy that has never been done before. The best 13 year old boy comedy jokes and rated R film. Yeah, I sure wish I could have seen this when I was 13. Oh, 13 years old. The movies I snuck into, the films I thought were funny when I was 13 years old. Mm. Harlan Williams, though, yeah. is always so funny. He so is. And this has the whole Porky's factor all frat movies wish for. Well, mm. actually, it was a little bit more like a Porky's 3 vibe, a.k.a. Porky's Revenge. The music, though, was amazing, including songs by The Cars, Whale, The Rascals, Neil Diamond, Urge Overkill, The Knack, Archies, Cool and the Gang, The Four Tops. All this and a great message about not being a dick to women. So, yeah, it was awesome. The soundtrack and the movie. No, it's just the soundtrack. That's right. The soundtrack was awesome. The movie, however, was stupid, idiotic, predictable, and nothing original that any any Animal House, Porky Sequel, or Revenge of the Nerds didn't show us before, only a lot worse. Harlan Williams and the soundtrack were mondo, but the movie was a terrible, stink-filled pile of already seen a million times before, formulaic, predictable, awful, vomit-inducing crap fest of stupidity with a little bit of TNA for good times. So it's... It's a mondo. No, sorry. It's a rage. But Harlan Williams and a great soundtrack were Mondo. Yeah, Harlan Williams. It was completely awful. It was so bad. Why couldn't they just have Harlan Williams in a movie? You're like Harlan Williams in in the uh, soundtrack, and I'm like Harlan Williams in the dildo catapult. That's what... But didn't you love the soundtrack? It was awesome. It was okay. It was pretty awesome. It was pretty good. Okay, need I remind you? I heard the soundtrack. I heard you also list all the bands off. Well, I I know. It was just because I'm, I wanted to talk more about how great that soundtrack the soundtrack's was. Soundtrack's good. Let's uh, find Sorority Boys the soundtrack on Spotify or I may be or, listening to Apple Tunes Sorority or, Boys soundtrack or, on my way home. Or tonight. what are the other ones? Music Music Masters or or Music Music Ahola or YouTube iTunes Party I, List uh, Apple you, Tunes Apple Time to Tie Tunes Yeah Apple all that, Tunes something all that stuff Yeah find it on there. Yeah, okay. It's on. All right. Um, So I guess Bryce gets to take from my... Actually, I think you have to take from my bag this week. Why? Well, okay, so here's the proof in the pudding of your whiny bitch self. I'm going backwards in time. So we literally just watched Sorority Boys. Last week, I had to watch Hero and the Terror. 
Oh, yeah. Was and the awesome. week before that, yeah. Bryce watched Texas Rangers. Was the week before story. that was Electra, which we both watched. Okay, Texas the week Ra- before that okay. was Highlander Endgame, oh, which I watched. Okay. So all we got to do is look at Texas Rangers, though. What, where did I choose that from? Was that the fan bag? You chose that. Oh, no. You chose it from my bag. Yeah. I was trying to get you to choose again from my bag. Yeah. You get to Rage or Dare. I'm going to go fan bag. All right. Fun bag it is. Because they... I don't really feel like raging this weekend. I know they're going to give me something good. They usually do. And I don't understand why. They just don't get it. But that's all right. It's to my benefit. Although the fact that I have to watch a good movie makes me rage because, you know. They it's don't not the it. intent. Okay, did this get released in theaters? I don't think it did. Okay, let's find it? out. What is it? The Haughty and the Naughty. Doesn't sound like it. I think it's a uh, Paris Hilton movie. You had a pretty good guess, That's actually. Good. And I'm pretty sure Paris Hilton always gets released in cinemas. I don't know that that's true. Well, let me tell you the box office for this. All right. Opening weekend was twenty-seven thousand six hundred ninety-six dollars. Awesome. The gross. Her, her and her wait, the gross yeah. was twenty-seven thousand six hundred ninety-six. But the worldwide gross was a whopping one point five nine six million dollars. So internationally, this movie did really, really, really well. I also have to remind you that as far as every Rage or Dare film that we've ever had on this podcast, mm. it has literally the lowest IMDb rating of all of them. 1.9? It's got a 1.9. Out of 10. <laughs> out of 1.9. And it did, in fact. Wow. was Paris Hilton, right? Yeah. You were 100% right bang on. Right. Is there anybody else in it that, that no. could make me think that maybe it's going to be uh, okay Joel David Moore. Don't know who Christine that is. Larkin, no. okay. Jonathan Erb, Adam Kulbersh, Greg cool. Romero Wilson. I don't know who these people Apparently are. Nobody I, I think these is. are her friends. Aaron uh, Cardillo, I know who Samantha wrote it? Bailey, wrote it? Tom Putman. Tom Putman? No, Putnam. It was, no, it was written by Putnam. Heidi. Oh, he directed it. it. Sorry, you're right. Heidi it was Heidi Fer- 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 who also. What else did she write? Probably in it, probably. Anything good? She wrote Princess, the TV movie, uh-huh. The Hottie and the Naughty, yeah, uh-huh. Roger Corman Presents Black Scorpion TV series, okay. Wasteland TV series, uh-huh. Dawson's <laughs> Creek TV series. Oh. I'm just reading some of the reviews. One of them said, why would you do this to people? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to watch the hottie and the naughty. Yes, you are. Oh, people, you know what? This has been the happiest day of my life. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Ragers, for listening. Thanks, the extended film Rage family, who you can find in our show notes. Thanks to Casey from the from the nerdy photographer, the voice of our Rager Dare. Listen in more frequently because we're going to have Casey on our show soon. Get ready for a full Casey load in your ears. Find us everywhere on social media at FilmRageYYC. Check out everything. FilmRage at FilmRageYYC.com, including our merch site for Redbubble and Tee Public. We always want to make this a raging blast for all listeners, so please comment, like, subscribe, or send us an email to FilmRageCalgary at gmail.com. Dare us to see terrible movies to fuel our rage as much as the hottie and the naughty is going to do next week. But no matter what you do, please, 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 Omega's Rage. That's it for this week. Rage on. Rage on.